Hi, my name is Joanna Cardenas and I'll be presenting my project on visual expression and how communicating emotions through visual art can feel a connection between the audience and the viewers. The viewers and the artists, I mean. My question was, how does an artist create visual art that effectively communicates their emotions? I wanted to explore the connection of an art piece to the artist and the art piece to the audience. Viewers tend to overlook art and its message and I wanted to find a way to feel that disconnection so we can have a more unified community between art artists and art viewers. Before we go on and talk about the many ways that we can make art that is emotional, we have to talk about art and its impact, but also the Expressionism movement. I believe that artists create art for themselves to communicate and reflect on their feelings, their ideas, their thoughts, but also for the audience. Different types of art promote emotional responses from the audience. It's important to note that art doesn't have emotion. There's so many different theories on what art is and what art does to make you feel a certain way and art and emotions relationship, but all of them can be disproven or just if you think about it, it doesn't make sense, something like that. I think that humans are complex and so are their feelings, so, so are their art if they make it. Art is defined as a human emotional stimulation created by an artist. Artists often experience emotion while creating art and this video shows those emotions that the artist may be going through while creating that art. The five emotional stages I go through when I paint. Stage one, having an obsessive mind comes into handy for the creative. She imagines her obsession so hard that it turns into photographic memory. She studies the shading, the light, the horror, sometimes awe, the slight sliver of purple going across a certain feature. She can't help it. Soon after, she sees another image fly through her mind, and she tries to bring it back because of how unusual she finds it. That image is then mixed in with her obsession, creating a picture of something that makes her want to just run home and capture that still in a canvas just as it is in her mind. For a few seconds, her brain lights up and she feels so powerful. Stage two, she gets her paints together and sets up her canvas. The vast whiteness of the slate staring straight at her just gives her goosebumps. The face goes here, the leaves go here, but what colors? Um, where does the hand I thought would look cool go? A tube of paint is then open and then another, both squeezed out on a makeshift palette. The sole purpose of her life right now is to finish this painting. And it must resemble every little pixel of the picture she drew in her head. Stage three. After putting on the first layer, she wonders whether this was a good idea at all. The white of the canvas is still peeking through, obscuring the intensity of the hues she wants to actually show in the painting. It looks plain ugly and she doesn't know where to get to next. What's the point? What if this idea was one of those which once I followed through just ended up being meh? A hopelessness starts to hover over her, almost convincing her to abandon the painting altogether. This looks nothing like my original idea at all. Stage four. 
She watches a week's worth of motivational videos to hype herself up and finally sits down to continue. Time flies by till finally the images shine through. Layers after layers of paint have collaborated together to bring about a solid structure that turns out to have some potential. The dark cloud parts from above her to have some light shine through. Stage five. She rides that high and paints and paints till she makes up her mind for the hundredth time that it is time to put that brush down. The strokes resemble the image in her mind, but does not quite look exactly like what she imagined. The painting is I, she says to herself. She stares at it from 20 different angles, and it does not just have that right look yet. What is just right, anyway? She ponders while she goes to bed, wakes up the next morning, and while going to work, once again becomes enamored by another image, which, like an addict, she itches to depict on another canvas. Oftentimes, the emotion felt by the artist is shown through their art piece and felt by the audience. An instance of this happening is fellow artist named Lauren Kendall. She claims that the Jewish bride made her cry. You know that rhymed. She claims to feel the love that both the man and the woman are feeling towards each other and the unborn child that you can see they're holding on to. And being a mother herself, she felt how they felt and how the artist felt while painting it. I believe that the arts are important for the connection between people and other people who are artists. 81% believe that art is a positive experience. 73% believe that the arts have given them a pleasurable experience to do or to experience or just look at. And 69% believe that art lifts them up art lifts the arts lifts them up it's clear that there is a connection between the artist and the audience but i believe that we can make that connection stronger and bigger by learning what i've researched throughout this year everything that i have done i think if we learn it we can appreciate art more and appreciate the emotion that goes into it. The very famous Expressionism movement, it started in 1905 in Germany. It was spread all across Europe because people started feeling anxiety about authenticity and spirituality. Expressionism is an art style which depicts not objective reality rather than the objective emotions that is felt while painting or before you're painting. The way it's shown is with wild colors, distortion, images of exaggerated primitism, fantasy, vivid, jarring, violent use of the elements of art. Pablo Picasso's Blue Period is a good example of melancholy paintings. He depicted the poor beggars and prostitutes through the use of monochromatic blues and greens. It was from 1901 to 1904 after he lost a dear friend to suicide. He conveyed what he was feeling through paintings of blue and green hues. Pablo Picasso created more cheery art after meeting Ferdinand Oliver and being exposed to French artists and paintings. It was from 1905 to 1907. He 
used orangey cheerier colors to create happier pieces and it's known that he was happier during that time. Jackson Pollock is known for his leading force in abstract expressionism. He used a different approach in creating paintings through action painting where artists would use their whole bodies to create a masterful piece. It's focused on the process rather than the product and you would use your entire hand to paint on the canvas. You would use your entire body, torso, legs to feel the brush strokes on the canvas. It would be emotion conveyed through action rather than just tiny little brush strokes like most people do. The expressionism movement set a new standard for judgment and creation between artists and the audiences. It set an example for other artists to create art that is expressive and audiences who want to appreciate it and judge it and depict what it means. Let's watch this video. It's only a minute. So how does this emotional connection happen? It all really starts with the artist. Why do we as artists paint things? We paint things because we're moved by something and we want to communicate that emotion to our viewers. It may be intentional or unintentional. An artist may purposely select an emotion for a piece and be strategic about it throughout their planning. Some artists want to make a statement with their art. And that could mean either making a political, a social, or maybe a religious statement. In a sense, that's emotional too. They feel passionately about a topic or a subject, and so they communicate that in their art. On the other hand, artists may communicate emotion unintentionally. Sometimes artists just simply paint. And if they're feeling a certain way at that time, it may convey in their artwork. For example, Jackson Pollock is one of the masters of art who suffered from depression. At one point, he even had a nervous breakdown. When you look at some of his work, you can sometimes see the expression of those feelings. And for viewers who struggle with the same issue, they may feel a special connection to his artwork. Many artists have successfully created art that conveyed emotion. Jackson Pollock was one of them. Edvard Munch was one of them. It's important to know that art isn't an exact science before we go into the different ways artists can communicate their emotions. There is so many different ways to convey your emotions, but throughout my research, I've seen that these are the most successful ways to communicate your emotions if you were to make an art piece. The design elements are going to be used as a reference to see all the ways you can manipulate them to create different emotions. The elements are lines, colors, tones, values, forms, shapes, textures, and space. Those are the ones that we're gonna be talking about. And they express different qualities that are rhythm, depth, harmony, contrast, growth, structure, and emotion, importantly, most importantly. Lines are often used as mood lines on the base of their paintings or art pieces. They can be used in the background. For example, imagine a painting of a, an ocean. There's a horizontal line to disconnect the sky and the ocean. You see it and you can see that horizontal lines are known to be used for a more calming, serene effect 
while they can be used for a more mundane feeling. The way the lines are applied can shift the feeling from feeling tense to relaxed or relaxed to tense. Vertical lines are connected to being bold and if you add a horizontal line making like an upside down T shape, it's connected to be more empowering and structured and stable. Diagonal lines are, have feelings of movement and activity. Diagonals, like that. Um, all these, this entire graph is just all the different ways you can use mood lines to create different emotions. Some are energetic and some are weak and sad. It just depends how you execute them. And this is a good reference to use if you were to use lines in a painting that you want to be emotional. Color plays a huge role in how you feel about a painting or art piece. It can convey different emotions. For example, red is for passion, romance, but also anger and strength. Um, blue for tranquility, but also sadness. Yellow for joy, warmth, and other feelings I forgot. No, it can also be abrasive. Yellow can also be abrasive. Green can be used for growth, peace, but also for jealousy and envy. Orange is usually used for safety and attention, but it can also be used for strength. Violent, vi let, violet is often connected to creativity and royalty in the past and black is associated with authority and power but also death and evil and white is usually known to be about peace and clarity. Different parts of the world have different meanings of these colors because it's just how they grew up learning. We grew up learning that this is the meanings of these colors. But in Eastern countries, for example, black is seen, no, white is seen as an evil color for death rather than we see black as the death color. It's a psychological thing of why we associate colors with different emotions. The tint of a color can also be adjusted if it's a lighter tint. It can be a lighter feeling like happiness and if it's a darker shade of the color it can be associated with more darker feelings like sadness and depression. If you remember Pablo Picasso he used monochromatics in his painting to depict feelings of either sadness through blues and darker shades and red for happiness and joy through lighter shades. <clears throat> there are two types of shapes, geometric and organic. Geometric shapes are like squares, rectangles, those depict strengths, um, Circles and ellipses depict movement and triangles lead the viewer to certain directions of their painting or art piece and inverted triangles symbolize more imbalance and tension. Organic shapes depict nature and are inspired by natural environments. They're usually more free-flowing and spirited and known to elicit those feelings. And while geometric shapes are more fixed and rigid, they represent more man-made environments like buildings and roads. They elicit feelings of structure and stability. Form is similar to shapes. They're organic or geometric. Geometric forms are found in architecture, buildings, basic forms of geometric 
form are cubes, spheres, cylinders, pyramids, etc. Those elicit more feelings of structure again and organic. It's basically the same to shape, but it's not. It's 3D. It's usually used in, in sculptures. Organic forms are more free-flowing free and curvy, like flowers, branches, and more natural subjects like the human body. Like you can see here, the organic shape is depicting more curvy and human characteristics, kind of, and it's more free-flowing and it's making you feel more calm and tranquil while the geometric one gives you more of a structured, more stable feeling. <sighs> Texture can be used as an illusion for the painting. It can be rough or smooth. It can be seen optically or physically. You can physically touch the painting and feel that it's rough or smooth, or you can just tell. Like in this painting right here, you can tell that the texture of this piece is rough. Um, there are three different types of textures, rough, smooth, and ethereal. Ethereal is not that important. It's just like clouds, smoke, all that like gas forms. Rough tends to leave feelings of energy and more physical emotions while smooth textures reflect more of a calm and tranquil emotion. Space can create dimension, depth, and perception. The positive space and the negative space are manipulated in this painting to create an impact that is more surreal. A lot of Chinese paintings, like Chinese landscape paintings like that, create a more serene feel because of the negative space in the middle or on the bottom, like oftentimes they depict on landscape paintings. Lighting can also be used to convey different emotions using different directions and different colored lighting. Light and shadows can be used to create either dark emotions or light emotions. The shadows tend to convey more emotions of ominous, darker feelings, like uncomfortable feelings, while light can convey happier feelings and lead you to be more at ease. Contrast can also have an impact. High contrast makes the image look darker and make it feel darker and more dramatic and sharp. And low contrast is the opposite. It makes it look more subdued, more gentle, and it makes the image look lighter. For example, this is what I mean. It looks darker and it gives you not as calm feelings as the low contrast picture would. The different directions of light can affect how you feel. The most important ones are backlighting, overhead lighting, and underhead lighting. Those are the ones that give you the most emotion or have shown to show the most emotion. Backlighting makes an image have a higher contrast and makes the piece look more dramatic. Like in this one, it looks to have more drama and more depth to it. Overhead lighting can either be a calming, natural feel, or if it's pushed too far, it can be uncomfortable to look at. And lastly, underhead lighting. It's often called horror lighting. It makes it makes the viewer, viewer feel like there's a sense of uncertainty, fear, and evil. 
the color used in lining can create different emotions too. Cool colors tend to convey <clears throat> more feelings of melancholy and sadness. while warmer colors tend to convey more feelings of warmth and comfort. <coughs> All these different design elements can be manipulated in different ways to communicate emotions. I believe if we analyze art therapy, we can, it can assist us in communicating emotions to each other. Art therapy can be used to convey certain emotions and traumas and has been proven to help with so many different aspects of life. For example, it helps with um, social skills, emotional resilience, self-esteem, conflict resolution, and personal insight, and most importantly, emotional healing. The definition, according to the American Art Association, the American Art Therapy Association is an integrative mental health and human services profession that enriches the lives of individual families and communities through active art making, creative process, applied psychological theory, and human experience with psycho therapeutic relationships. I had to write it down because I was not going to remember all that. This is a graph that shows all the different ways that art has helped people. It has helped people with um, trauma, PTSD, all the different things you can think of. It has helped a lot of people and I think if we pick it apart, we can find how it has and how we can use it to help connect each other again. The elements to art therapy are color or the lack of color, lines, their direction, weight, quality, the integration, mediums, and most, and lastly, placement. placement. Color is the same as we established before. It's the context that matters in this case and in every other case. It's psychological, whatever you grew up believing that this color means that it's going to reflect in your painting or art piece. <clears throat> the line quality of a piece can depict emotion. For example, cross hatching. It draws attention to the viewer and is often connected to anxiety. Heavy lines carry strong aggression and attention, but also confidence. Broken lines convey stress and low energy. It's usually connected to mental health issues and physical, men physical illnesses that they're worried about the client, I mean, and faint lines, faint light lines depict insecurity and depression and other sad feelings. Jabbing marks, like you're stabbing the paper, portrays outward aggression or inward anger. And so do um, jagged lines. They create anger they, they convey anger and high energy and revenge sometimes. Straight lines portray more of a sense of need and determination, but also aggression. Pointed lines portray the want to strive for a goal and the excessive erasing draws attention and is usually connected to uncertainty and insecurity. Clients of art therapy use many different materials and mediums. These materials can determine different emotions. Pencils and markers are proven to give more control to the client. 
but it also gave them more control of their emotions to convey in the piece. Painting is more stimulating, but less control is given to them, and it gives them more of a spontaneous feel and more of a spontaneous action. Clay can elicit integration and regression, depending on how it's formed. You just have to look at it, honestly. Pastels can create more room for expression, but it gives them gives the client less control. Markers and crayons are often linked to childhood and development of their past. The placement is also important to find the underlying emotion. The very top of the paper, if you were to draw something, the very top signifies dif difficulty in reaching goals. The right side, this is my right, it signifies anticipation for future events. The bottom signifies insecurity, and the left side um, signifies more of a regression of the past, looking back and associated with passivity. Pass, passive, passivity. You know what I mean. <laughs> the elements to consider when the Depicting a client's artwork is the context, the themes, quality, colors, and lines. They usually talk about it after creating the artwork and it has proven to help people a lot. To conclude, there is no right or wrong way to make art and to communicate it. It just depends on how you do it, but it also doesn't matter. That's just how art is. But I have found that using the, te the techniques that I've talked about and using some of the techniques on of art therapy, there will be an easier way to communicate emotion to our audience and if people who view art would simply review what I've researched, there would be a more closed disconnection between the artist and the audience. And I think these techniques will help with connection and application, depending on which one you are. If you're the artist, it can help you <clears throat> convey emotions, and if you're a viewer, you can depict them. <coughs> Sorry. The arts unifies our communities. It helps people learn about other people, understand artists and their communities. 73% 73, 73 of these people agree with this statement. Anyone can be connected and 72% agree with this statement as well. I think, again, to reiterate, I think it's important to review what I've researched so we can feel more connected, especially in a time like this, where we feel so far apart from each other and we feel so lost and confused. I think art is a good way to express yourself and if you were to share it this is a, these what i've reviewed is a good way to find out what they're meaning and and we can feel more connected to each other these are my sources if you have any questions just let me know and i'm just going to go over my senior project real quick for my senior project, I made a mural and I named it The Disconnection. I actually had so many different names for it, but I felt like if I told people the, t the title, it was going to give it away, but I have to give them something because then they're not going to get it. It's at Discovery High School. It's right outside the library 
wall outside the library on the wall where people used to take pictures and I hope they still take pictures because I think it would be cool if I would see people I used to go to school with take pictures in front of the wall and I painted that I would be like oh my god I did that you know um it's gonna be there for a really long time unless someone like scrapes it off or something I sealed it so it shouldn't go away I did forget to sign it but it's okay unknown artists are cool too I use monochromatic reds and blues the red symbolized more as a passionate energetic and strong feeling while the blue conveys more of a sad and weak feeling it's you I, I used organic shapes on the blue person to depict more free-flowing feelings or just flowy feelings and geometric for the red to depict more strong and energized feelings the blue is posed in a more weak tired position but still reaching out to the red while the red is more energized and strong on their own what does it mean it means well what it means whatever you want it to mean i have my own interpretation of what it means but i like i want to hear what you think and then and then I can tell you why I made it. Um, the only wrong answer is Steven Universe. So it's not about that. I would not draw fan art on a school building. <laughs> um, I did make a short video. I made a time lapse of our process. I made it with my friend Aaliyah and sometimes Stephanie would help. I think she helped once, but I still thank her for doing that. It was really nice of her to do. Um, um, if you want the link to the video, it's literally just a time lapse. I linked the article from DHS News where they asked me about my senior project or product. And that's the end of my presentation. Um, I think it's important to make art now more than ever to communicate with other people who are in who are in need to relate to something right now because with everything going on it's just hard to really feel something and really feel the impact of what is happening anyways thank you and i hope you have a good day thanks